Hello and welcome to today's show, which will be a very quiet one. I will present the three different kind of shooting boards that I have. Uh, the one here is more or less traditional shooting board for shooting the end grain side of the wood. The one here to my right is a miter edge shooting board where I shoot mitered edges at the 45 degree angle. And the one in the front is a long grain shooting board where I shoot the long grain side of the wood. So I will quickly go through how I built these three and I will show some typical usage of each shooting board. I would not spend that much time on the traditional one. Mine has no special features and you can find hundreds of these on YouTube. This one I think has some special features. It has a movable fence and it has some integrated T-tracks for clamping down the wood. So I will show you those features. Uh, also the, the miter edge one has some integrated tracks for clamping down the wood. Uh, that I will show and I will also give you some tips how to set it up for a very exact 45 degree cut because that setup process could be a bit tricky. Uh, during this session I will also give you my thoughts on this Veritas shooting board plane that I had for about six years, some pros and cons of that one. So I uh, hope you will enjoy this. So we start by taking a look at the traditional shooting board. Uh, I have this permanently mounted in my front vise here. The plane rides in this track and it can't move left to right. In the back I have a reference fence that is 90 degree to the plane sole and that is very important. I have a small small gap here so the plane can pass the, the fence but without getting too much tear out. Some people used to move this so you plane that off at the same time to have like a zero clearance but I keep it a bit away from the from the plane so maybe one or two tenths of millimeters. The typical way of using this is that I make the cut on the table saw maybe a bit oversized a few tenths of millimeters and then I fine tune the parts with a shooting plane. It could be Typically drawer fonts and other small parts like internal parts and drawers and so on But also you get the very good looking end grain surface when you use this This shooting plane uh, So I use it also on parts where I have visible end grain. I think the, the Veritas plane Has the handle a bit too far back the the cut is here and the handle is here in this application it's not much of a problem because the plane won't move but Sometimes I think I get better control if I hold the plane centered over the cut. I have some uh, accessories for this one as well that I will show you. The first accessory I have is this 45 degree fence that registers against the main fence and then is screwed down into threaded inserts in the base. This is made for trimming mitered corners like this one, uh, it could be a picture frame or whatever and then you just plane like you did on the 90 degree end grain. Here I think this invention makes a huge difference on, on making really tight mitered corners that otherwise could be a bit problem. Uh, I have one more accessory that I want to show you. The last accessory I have is this 45 degree Thing. I think they call it a donkey ear shooting board accessory. It has a fence in the back where you register the wood and it's uh, screwed down to the base just as the miter add-on. So the donkey ear thing is attached to the base. This is used for shooting mitered, mitered edges like this one here. Uh, you could of course shoot miters with a 45 degree fence that I showed before. But here it's, it's a quite high distance and it would need a lot of force to cut through that. So you instead turn the piece in this direction and shoot like, like this. Since I made a dedicated mitre edge shooting board, I don't use this that much anymore. I think it's, it's too many fences and angles and things that need to be correct for, to get a good result and uh, the mitre edge shooting board is easier to use. An area where I found myself using this shooting board a lot 
is when it comes to chamfering down of stock uh, like this one it could be a table leg or whatever when I do these chamfers I uh, set the blade depth so the, the plane takes a heavier cut since it's a small area that you're working on so that is no problem then I eyeball a 45 degree angle here and then it's just a matter of pushing the wood towards the fence and counting the strokes so here we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As long as you keep the angle quite consistent and you count the number of strokes, the corners should line up very well with this method. So uh, I will give you a few hints and tips how I built this uh, shooting board and then we move to the next one. This shooting board is made up of a base part and then two fences. One side fence for the plane so it can't move left to right. And then one reference fence for the wood to get the correct angle. Both these fences sit in oversized holes down in threaded inserts in the base. So this fence I can find you in the position left to right. And this fence I can fine tune both the angle and the position. Then on the work area I have some threaded inserts where I attach accessories as I showed before. On the back side there is a piece of wood so I can clamp this shooting board in my front vise. If we look from a cross section view the actual base is made up of two layers of birch plywood. So here it's dual layers, here it's single layer. This white material here is a low friction plastic. Uh, on my long range shooting board I use waxed MDF instead of this plastic and that MDF has survived very well. So that's all the parts that's to it so it's, it's a quite simple thing to build.